Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecaster here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, October 6, 2020. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. It was in fact Turnaround Tuesday. I have a laundry list of notes today. The market put in a nice little intraday reversal, finished near the lows. We have stuff going on. We have to decipher the markets, peel back the onion. What we're going to do is we're going to look around the horn at a bunch of different charts so we can get a bird's eye view of exactly what's going on. So then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some downside possibilities and we're going to again bring back the schematics and say, hey, is this schematic number one or is this schematic number two? And where is that quote unquote line in the sand? The first thing we need to do is assess the daily chart. What jumps off the page? Well, number one is we have a nice reversal candle on our hands, finishing below the 50 period moving average after getting above it yesterday, a la the one day wonder. Let's use this as a learning opportunity and say, hey, what did the market run into? What caused the market to reverse? Well, on one hand, we can say it was the news item. What was the news item? We had a Trump-esque type of event. We had Trump fire up the tweeter, and he's talking about putting a hold on the stimulus package. Now, I have an opinion on that. Opinions are like, you know what, everybody's got one of them. What we'll say about it is, it was kind of Trump-esque. He does this stuff, then he reverse course. Who knows what's going to happen? That's why we don't give a hoot about the news. Let's just refocus on the charts and go back to what was the market doing or where was it when the market reversed well let's pick it apart for a second let's just use some logic and say where was the high right here let's draw a, a line across to the left and there it is again there's that breakdown area that we've discussed before let's go over it one more time so here you have a gap and the reason there's a gap is because the following day the market gaps down and it tries to rally back to this spot and fails. It tries to rally back to this spot and fails so that is by definition a breakdown area. Now it doesn't mean each and every time on the spot the market gets to a breakdown area it's going to fail like it failed today. That's not necessarily the case. Let's recap what happened yesterday. They filled a gap. They closed well. They recaptured 3,400, 340 in the SPY. These are big fat round numbers. They opened up and they recaptured them once again this morning. They were pushing higher. They pushed higher right into this area and we can say that here's a pivot high which is at 343 and change. The high today was 342 and change. So they pushed up into that zone and that's when the tweet hit and the market reverses course. We can say it was the news. We can say the news was the spark. The price was the reason. Doesn't really matter what we say. Doesn't matter what we believe. What matters is what the charts do, what the charts tell us, and what we can infer and read from the charts. That's what matters on a day in, day out basis. The news, the stuff, the shenanigans, the rope-a-dope, all that stuff doesn't matter. What matters is, can you read the chart? Let's go through inside the numbers. What we'll see in the morning is that we had the market pushing higher. We knew where the bogey was on the south side. We had an area of support that we had our eye on. The market came up just short of that support, turned around and went back in the other direction. Everything in the morning session was pretty much on schematic. Right out of the chute, we're already talking about Turnaround Tuesday. Some of you take this as a joke. It's not really a joke. Think about how many days we discussed the fact that the market did turn around on Tuesday. Pretty interesting phenomenon. At the time, early on, they were hanging around just underneath the big fat round numbers, ES3400, 340 in the SPY. So things are fine. The market's not bearish. Nothing is wrong with the market. They're hanging around an important spot pre-market. That is, by definition, garden variety. There wasn't a lot of stuff happening in terms of stocks on the move in the pre-market. We were getting somewhat of another floater type of morning. It's not the way it wound up, so let's move along and then see what happened. So the early thoughts look like this. Now we're going to get inside my head a little pre-market early thoughts. 
So the markets were up a lot yesterday. After a big day, we should not be surprised to see a little bit of consolidation, at least in the morning session, in the early going. Hanging around just under 3400 and 340 is bullish, but they need some energy to punch through and stay above. There are a couple of spots down south that would be normally attract price. ES 3385 and 3377 are two such numbers. Translation into the SPY, 33850 and 33760. Keep your eye on or remember or write down on a sticky note, 33850. They're also numbers that under normal garden variety markets provide support and a place where the buy the dip crowd would step in with open arms. Now that's in the morning session. That's in the early going. The flip side is opening the day above 3400 and 340 would be extra bullish. Okay, fair enough. Let's move it along a little bit. Now we've got resistance, and this is still at 921 pre-market. Resistance would be 340.75 to 341.50. So we've got support underneath, that's down south, and we've got resistance up north. We're in uniform. We're prepared for the day. It's still pre-market. We have numbers under our belt. Let's move along. After the market opens, I'm still harping on the best spot is 338.50. Doesn't mean they'll get there before they go higher, but that's my number. And the early going, that's my number, 338.50, moving along. Now I give you a little bit of a reasoning behind 338.50. What we'll notice is there's an hourly chart breakup candle low around 338. I've got 338.50 for a different reason. I know that's a zone that if the market pays a visit to early in the morning, buyers are going to step in, they're going to show up, they're going to buy up the market, by the dip crowd will be there. Let's move along a little bit. And it's kind of quiet. They're floating around. Not much is going on. Checking in on the quiet meter indicator. It's flashing hashtag quiet tape. That was by 10 o'clock in the morning. Where can you get your hands on the same indicator? At joesindicatorshop.com, of course. This is the type of stuff that happens when the market is uber quiet. You're going to get some off-color commentary. Let's move along a little bit. Smelled like they were on their way up to a journey up to 340.75. As long as they stay above 340, that was the deal. 340.75 to 341.50. Now we move along a little bit. After a quiet period comes a period that's not so quiet. Little bit of movement, 1045, 338.50, 338. Is it still good? The answer is yes. Now pay attention to this one. What if they don't get down there and just go sideways but under the big fat round number of 340? They're just eating time off the clock to make another push higher regardless whether they're above or below 340. So as the morning develops, that's hashtag reading the tape. You can't say that at 931, but after the market's been trading a while, I could say that. Above 340 opens the door for a target of 34075. That should be 340. I left out a zero. Typo. They missed so far, and here it comes. They'll do it. Okay, let's move along. Quiet as a mouse, as long as they stay above 338, she's in good shape. 33850 is still a good spot if reached. I harped on this all morning long. That's basically your midday schematic. Let's take a sabbatical from the notes and go over to the chart. Let's get our faculties. Right of the vertical is today's activity. Don't pay attention to where they blew through 338.50, which is the horizontal line. Let's first pay attention to where they came up just short, just penny short, and took off to the upside. So here we are. They're trying to make a push higher, and in the morning session, they make the high of 340.56. Remember, it was 340.75, and I said they would do it. They came down. They had a pullback. They went toward the support of 338.50, making a low of 338.66. There was a reason why I was harping on 338.50. Remember, here's an hourly chart. You had other stuff going on, okay? You had an hourly breakup candle. Let me get rid of this horizontal line so you can see what I'm referring to. Here's the hourly chart breakup candle I was referring to. It was from yesterday. So they love to come down and test what? The lows of those type of candles. And here on the hourly chart is the same spot making a low of 338.66 before turning around and going back up north. 
Now, refocus inside the numbers and ask yourself, forget about what happened in the afternoon. Ask yourself, could I have benefited this morning? And the answer is, if you're paying attention to the notes, yes. Let's move along, see what else we've got. 110, target hit, 340.75. They don't have to stop, and they didn't. It's just that they got there based on today's activity and staying above 338. All right, let's move along. Still at 2 o'clock, they're above 340, no secrets. As long as they're above 340, there are higher numbers. No reason there can't be. I already showed you a pivot up at 343 and change. Move along. And by the way, into the end of the day, we've seen weird stuff happen. We've seen them have a rescue operation, close right back up near the highs, or at least put on a repair job so that the market closes in a fine position based on the daily close and 15, 20 minutes earlier it was in the dumpster. We've seen all kinds of stuff, which is why trading at the end of the day is really more like gambling than it is a business or scientific operation. During the morning session and during the meat of the day, you have time on your side and the market is developing a storyline. When it goes haywire at the end of the day, you don't have enough time to get a handle on the next storyline, which is why trading after three o'clock is very, very difficult. Sometimes it's like a suicide mission. And so hence, into the end of the day, anything goes. Now, back to the chart and check it out. We've got the line adjusted to 335. Where did the market close today? 334. 95. Are there any accidents or coincidences? I think not. Why else, by the way, is 335 important? Well, let's just look at it like this. Let's kind of peer back a little bit and look at the thing from the 30,000 foot view. We'll look at the chart from a high level perspective, all right? So let's just start with the gap up here, 335. What was the high in this candle? The high was 334.96. All right, so the market trades above and below or around 335. Then you have, and this is something my eye is drawn to, so it's important. This is a reversal candle. And where's the closing price of the reversal candle? 335. Is a big time reversal candle like that a big deal? Yes, it is. The market is gapping down. It's caught. This is the first hourly candle of the day. It has a rescue operation where they're looking into the abyss to go down to fill this gap down here only reverses. So we have a rescue operation. That candle closes right on the money, 335. And then the market trades around 335 for the next several hours. And here you go. Where's the gap? For me, the gap is at 334.96. Sound familiar? It's the same number that was a pivot high over here. Guess what? That spot around 335 is important. Where did we close today? One penny below that number. That's right, it's important. Almost forgot, let's check out stocks on the move. We had three on the board today. The first one was PAYX, we had DraftKings, and then we had Pets. Officially, one hit its price objective today, another one came close, we'll take a look at both. Paychecks, wasn't coming close until the market got hit late in the day. Then all of a sudden, Paychecks fell into the number, came up slightly short, However, just to prove a point, the low was 79.07, and guess what? Our number was, and it was on the board a minute ago, you saw it, 79.04. That was the target. Now, into the end of the day, it's not the same trade anyway. Just to prove the point or display the fact that the numbers work regardless of who's tweeting what, what stimulus package is or is not approved, it doesn't matter. Let's go check out another example of exactly what I just said. DraftKings, not the ideal trade. It traded above the first number quite a while today, traded away from it, and then when the market got hit with everything else, it finally came in to satisfy the numbers. Now these two numbers, 57.52, 56.38, they're close together, so we employ the paint-by-number scenario. Half at the first number, half at the second number. This is if the trade was actually valid. This trade really wasn't valid. A, it's too late in the day. They came too close earlier, traded away a little bit. It's not the same trade as opposed to the one that comes straight into the number at 9.40 in the morning. That's a different type of trade. But here, just to show you the numbers work, if you split the difference and take the spot in between, painting by the numbers, 
you're at 5695 and you can see what happened the thing or the stock shot up and did make a high of 5759 so technically speaking it actually did the deal but painting by the numbers after three o'clock in the afternoon certainly isn't the same as 9 30 10 o'clock in the morning but you can see either way any way you want to look at it the numbers still worked it stopped DraftKings from falling found support just under the second number and had a pretty nice ride away from the second number to where back to the first guess what they're both important numbers that's what I've been telling you one more look at the S&P or the SPY chart here's a 120 minute chart I want to point something out so we just talked about an hourly chart reversal candle making the case for 335 that's basically where the candle closed now let's take the same candle but using the 120 minute chart you can see the close is slightly less but that's not the point the point is the other side of it the other side of it is the market gap down that day and it had a rescue operation for some reason somebody felt that below these lows here and the low here in this day in this candle was 331.19 so somewhere in the neighborhood let's just say between 331 and 332 somebody felt the need to have a rescue operation in the market so we're going to look at that a couple of different ways a we're going to say somebody felt that price was important once before so that zone will likely be important once again do we have supporting cast yes we do what's supporting cast well we have a 50 period moving average right now at about 331.77 it'll be slightly different tomorrow slightly different the day after that but the point is is that down there in between the low of that reversal candle and the 50 period moving average is a the last line of defense before this gap is filled and the gap happens to be at 329.31 it's the last line of defense and b also should be where the goal line defense comes out to try and fend off the bears before they go down and fill the gap that's just the way the market works the majority of the time using the 80 20 rule net net the majority of the time f reach sooner than later somewhere in the vicinity of this low should be defended f for nothing else than on an intraday basis what about camp iwm this thing was bullish 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 all the way up until it made a new high and then reversed course it's not an all-time high or anything it's just a recent high now let's take a look at this from a weekly chart perspective so they made a new high above this high okay that high was just short of 160 they made a little bit higher high today reversed course but from a weekly chart perspective look at the convergence of moving averages here there's all the moving averages below price there's a gap down here they could fill the gap they could even come to pay a visit toward the moving averages but guess what even if they did there is nothing bearish about that until and unless they started getting below and then closed a week below those moving averages paying a visit we would call it what running a test now you have something else interesting going on here so i'm gonna go with a little bit of outside the box stuff here so this is stuff from the course but i don't talk about everything from the course in here that's the lazy e-mini trader i talk about some of the stuff i wet your whistle a little bit i don't talk about the in-depth stuff i don't talk about the all the stuff you peel back the onion all the real meat and potatoes this is maybe part meat part potato so you have a big breakup candle here and the low is 147.22 so what do they like to do they like to come back and test the lows of breakup candles the highs of breakdown candles okay fair enough so the week ending September 11th they made a low of what 147.68 they tested the low near the low the next week they shot up where was the high 156.85 that's a pretty good rally away from that low fair enough what happened the next week they closed below the low the close was 146.41 let's refresh on the low the low was 147.22 they closed below the low that's generally a warning sign that's generally bearish for the market all of a sudden here we are at new highs so it's like a recapture or we just wipe it off the table well the fact that they're at new highs obviously closing below the low wasn't real meaningful at the time however it's still in the back of my mind they closed below the low are they going to give up the breakup candle low this time around are they going to come down 
give up the breakup candle low and the move not something we anticipate it's something i'm watching from a weekly chart perspective not eminent just watching how about our friend the rsp this is the equal weight s p index this is interesting also down one percent today the spy was down almost two percent so on a relative basis or comparative basis the rsp did better than the spy why is that because the spy similar to the q's but not quite the same is top heavy that's why we look at the rsp we look at it to see what the distribution across the index is what the breadth across the index is right now the breadth wasn't as bad across the entire index today at the end of the day as it was in the top heavy as compared to the rsp the top heavy spy of note the rsp also above all the moving averages on close today unlike the spy which closed below the 50 period moving average again we're watching this stuff there's not a trade based on this information but this is a puzzle piece it's on the table everything gets put into the bucket we turn it all around see what comes out the other side we get the storyline as a result the folks down at the transportation department same routine they made a high they reversed finished on the low they're above all the moving averages so we don't get any quality information other than the fact that it did the same thing the other markets did finished down less than one percent in the day really can't make a federal case out of that above all the moving averages the trend is your friend until what until it's not how about the folks out in silicon valley the Qs down over six bucks today that qualifies as in the camp of getting spanked staying above the 20 period moving average the thing will be okay in the okay camp why is that and here's the way we can look at this and you can look at other charts this way too just picking on this one because it's here and i feel like having this discussion we could still say that this was a move higher this is certainly a pullback formation this is a bullish wedges type of pattern so as long as they stay above the 20 and keep closing above there this could certainly be setting up for another move higher this doesn't have to collapse i want you to be able to look at a chart and see the market on both sides you have to be the umpire you have to be able to call balls and strikes putting your bias in your back pocket keep it in the dugout the market had the reversal today you'll hear all kinds of negative news and the market may go down again tomorrow that doesn't mean she's going to fall apart she may fall apart but we've given some spots in the spy i'm pointing out another way to look at the chart in the queues you have to look at it from both angles and then the storyline becomes what the storyline is if the market starts getting below certain spots we have to look to the next spot below for example in the queues if they start pushing on this daily chart 20 period moving average what's next well how about this gap right here looks like it was filled but i got news for you it wasn't 271.56 the low in this candle was higher and guess what that gap is still an open target by the way another way to look at this what happens if they fill that gap find support and start turning back in the other direction what could we say about that scenario we're not saying that is going to happen we don't know whether that will or won't happen what i'm saying is if it did happen we would call it a garden variety retracement if you don't know what that is it's in the course lazy e-mini trader how about the xlf what was the final exit around 25 am i out of it you better believe it one entry three exits have a nice day nice trade i told you i didn't want to marry this thing i just wanted to make the trade and i am aware that there are a lot of you that made the same exact trade nice job kudos to you not every trade has to be a home run in fact base hits put you in the hall of fame smash mouth anything different not really what did they do by the way here's a breakdown candle high what's the high 180.82 what was the high today happens to be 181.61 so they spike it of course miss the gap that exists from the day before so the gap was about 20 cents higher and then they reverse course like all the other markets again there's nothing technically wrong on the daily chart it's in an uptrend they just reversed course from an intraday perspective but finishing down a little over one percent couple of bucks after it was up tremendous yesterday is what 
it's a garden variety retracement of yesterday. You have to put each and every market in the perspective it belongs on its own chart. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're going to pull the ripcord here today. It's everything I wanted to and intended to discuss. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.